Hello, good evening. Thank you for joining me again. I wonder if you have ever said, it's not fair. Or if you haven't said it, have you thought and felt it, but just not said it out loud? Most of us have done it, even as adults. Although the voice we tend to imagine saying it is more likely to be that of a stroppy four-year-old. For the four-year-old, it's not fair is likely to refer to not being allowed to do something they want to do. Small children tend to be remarkably self-centered and that's not necessarily a bad thing because it's to do with self-preservation. If you hear a slightly older child, a seven-year-old perhaps, say the same thing, it may still relate to themselves, but it's quite likely to be in the context of perhaps feeling that they're being blamed for something that is really not their fault or that they don't perceive to be their fault. And the same phrase, it's not fair, from a 10 year old is likely to be more outward looking. Perhaps the way that someone else is being treated is not fair. And that I think is when the phrase, it's not fair, changes from being about self-centered personal desire into being about other person-centered desire for justice. The next two weeks is fair trade fortnight. Fair trade, which I'm sure you know this, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, to quote their own website, <coughs> is about better prices, decent working conditions, local sustainability, and fair terms of trade for farmers and workers in the developing world. I used to regularly do a fair trade assembly in my primary schools, and I did it by following the story of a banana. It looked at the effort that grows into growing bananas and the amount that many people who work in the banana industry get paid, highlighting the fact that the closer to the banana tree you work, the less you are likely to be paid for your efforts. And the reaction of the children is always the same. It's not fair. Of course, fair trade is not just about bananas. It's about lots of stuff. Very often stuff that we don't even think about, especially if we're on the receiving end of finding a bargain, perhaps. So I'd like to read you a poem. I came across this on a blog called Joy in Enough, and it's by Catherine Masterman, and it's specifically written for Fair Trade Fortnight. And she's inviting us to broaden our horizons and consider the supply chain behind the things that we buy. I saw a bargain today, a fabulous dress, a pair of shoes, much cheaper online, how could I refuse? Arriving tomorrow at no extra cost, I hurried to click before it was lost. But just as I hovered, I heard someone say, let me show you who paid for your bargain today. She showed me the fields where the cotton was grown and the pitiful payment the farmers took home. She showed me the rivers where pesticides flow and the fields alongside them where crops barely grow. I covered my ears, but I still heard her say, there are others who paid for your bargain today. She showed me the factories away in the east where shifts are the longest and wages the least. She showed me the workers too scared to protest as the contracts must follow the cheapest, not best. I told her enough, but I still heard her say, yet others will pay for your bargain today. The packers from warehouses too tired to stand, the child breathing fumes from the couriers round, the fish eating fibres washed down to the deep, the families who live near the burning trash heap. Then my children looked up and I heard them say, how long till we <clears throat> pay for your bargain today? Maybe these next two weeks, fair trade fortnight, could be an opportunity for us to really think about what we buy, where it's come from, and who's been involved in getting it to us. And obviously, if there is a fair trade option for the things that we need, then taking that option if we possibly can. As ever, I'm going to finish with a prayer. And as ever, if you would like it to be your prayer, 
feel free to stick an amen or any other comment in the box at the end. Loving God, help us to be people who stand up for justice in whatever way we can. Amen. Thank you for joining me. See you again tomorrow, I hope. Bye for now.